Let's begin with a brief history of money. And um, in 1933, uh, FDR signed an executive order making it illegal for the average person to hold gold. And in 1972, Richard Nixon signed an executive order repealing the gold standard, essentially making the world's reserve currency backed with no assets. So after failed talks uh, with international creditors, um, Greece decided to apply capital controls and closed its banks and its stock exchange this summer triggering long lines at ATMs where withdrawals were uh, maxed out at 60 euros a day. The great thing about money is that it behaves like water. It moves in, around, and over obstacles in its way. So if the Federal Reserve ever tries to do something like they did in Greece or uh, imply capital controls on our spending, we have other options, like Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is an open source software running on the internet, providing a peer-to-peer -peer decentralized network and it gives a immutable public ledger. And the beauty of Bitcoin is that uh, it's made up of several incremental uh, uh, changes, which are leaps and bounds. It makes it seem leaps and bounds ahead of what it actually is. And incremental change is nothing new to us. It's the easiest way that we assign trust to new concepts and technologies. So the difficult part with Bitcoin is we're explaining two things at once. We're explaining cryptography and digital money. And until recently, things like Apple Pay didn't exist and people weren't carrying money around um, on their phones and cryptography is only studied by about one percent of mathematicians so when we look at our accounts online what we're really seeing is a digital representation of our money not a robot somewhere stack, uh, counting our stacks of cash and it's being displayed on, as ones and zeros uh, on our screen now the vehicle that we use to send money whether it's digital or physical is a check and there's two parts to that right so there's a routing number, uh, which is what we use to send, uh, send money, and an account number, which is how we uh, take deposits in. And you can think of the routing number as a Bitcoin private key, and you can think of the account number as a Bitcoin public key. And the public key is also known as the Bitcoin address. So here's the fun part. We're going to try to explain cryptography uh, <laughs> with algebra. And <laughs> what we normally focus on here is uh, the answers to these equations, but when all the inputs are the same, the real thing that we should focus on is the uh, function. So um, when uh, Bitcoin is working, we're having one cryptographic math function that's being performed by the miners. So we can see that if we all agree that 3 plus 2 is 5, um, and if we change one of those inputs to 3.1, it's not going to be 5 anymore. So we can say that x plus y equals z uh, every time. So if we change x to w, and add it to Y, we're not going to get Z anymore. We're going to get something else. So we can see that the sender, uh, we'll make X the sender's Bitcoin private key. And the simple math function is being replaced by the, uh, the miner's function. And the receiver's Bitcoin public key is now replaced by Y. So you're always going to get a unique ID Z when you combine those things together. So below here is an example of a private key, the function, and the Bitcoin public key. And when you combine those together, you're always going to get a unique ID. That's the most important thing. So every day, thousands and thousands of credit card transactions are processed uh, by companies' internal servers and hardware. And that all costs the banks money to implement, develop, and deploy. And not to mention, they have fraud protection and customer support centers that they're manning, which essentially just uh, passes on the buck to the consumer, increasing your bottom line. Now, in Bitcoin's case, every 10 minutes, all of the transactions are packaged into a chunk of data called a block. And this block is broadcast to the network of miners. And the miners are checking the public and private keys for a unique transaction ID and making sure that all of those uh, are valid. And then they send the Bitcoins to their addresses that they need to go to. And so once the miners get an answer, they basically raise their hand and say, Please double check my answer so I can claim my reward for doing, or being the first one to do, do it right. And this entices the miners to add to the security of the network by essentially getting paid for doing math. 
Now, with Bitcoin, there's only 21 million Bitcoins that will ever be created, and each Bitcoin is divisible by eight decimal places, which means in global terms, we have uh, 2.1 quadrillion units for the world to use, and now you have a way to send uh, wealth anywhere in the world in 10 minutes for essentially zero fees, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. But the question is still, uh, why should I use it? Well, if you value security and you've ever had your personal information or financial information hacked from companies like these, uh, <laughs> you should really be asking yourself, what is it costing me by not using Bitcoin?